Hey guys, I'm going to review this book for Amorama.com. It is by the Research Squad, which is Lee Lloyd, Brian Balkville, and Alexander Johnson, and it's called Tiger, a Modern Study of Fargestahl number 250031. Now, I believe that uh, Jim suggested I do this book because it's right up my alley of the things that I, I, I review and, and by myself anyway. I already own this book. I bought the um, PDF of it six to eight months ago, a long time ago, as soon as it came out, because I had to, right? So I actually know quite a bit about it because I've had it on my iPad for a very long time. And I was actually trying to think of a way to review it on my iPad, but that doesn't really film very well. So when, when this physical one came out, I was glad because now I can finally talk about it. So let's talk about um, important Tiger reference material. We have the Modeler's Guide to the Tiger Tank, which I've reviewed previously. That's got a lot of good layout information about how the vehicles should be done when scale modeling. We have uh, this series. This is Jensen Doyle. This is just basically DW to Tiger 1. It's like the Bible of Tigers. It's like the, the book that a lot of um, Modeler's Guide to the Tiger Tank kind of drew from. This thing is amazing. I haven't reviewed this yet, but it's, it's amazing. And it's basically the standard for like Tiger reference books. We also have books like this, uh, which is Tigers in Combat series by Wolfgang Schneider. Uh, this is a the reprint, the notorious paperback, which has uh, much lower quality pictures. But these are, again, uh, considered must-haves for anybody who is researching Tiger tanks. Because the amount of information here is insane. And these have become, you know, things that everyone that gets into this uh, field, if you will, understands they need to buy, read, and then move on from there. So what this is, when they say a modern study of Fargestell 250031, means it is a modern pictorial survey of this vehicle. A good chunk of what makes up DW to Tiger 1 is very similar surveys of surviving tigers. Very high quality pictures, but in black and white, and not as extensive. So at different parts of this book, right, so right here, 250031. This is the exact same tank. You can even see there's the really poorly renumbered turret. So a lot of this, you know, it has been done, so to speak, but not to the level and quality that these guys did it at. Plus, it's recent. Although the stuff, I don't know when um, Hillary Doyle would have been surveying the vehicle when this book was made, but since the markings are the same, it couldn't have been that long ago. So inside, uh, firstly, I will point out that it is very well laid out, and the paper quality is really high. Um, everything's kind of semi-gloss, thick gloss. Some of these pictures are very, very pretty. Also, in the PDF version, these are incredibly high res, which is really, really helpful for someone like me. We got some story on sort of the, the history of 712, and these are the, how it was found, by the way which until I got this book, I hadn't seen that. Sort of a brief history of, you know, where she was and what happened to her. Then a few stories on the crewmen. Um, a bit on technical information. Here's our technical illustrator, and that's one of the hiccups I have here, is that there's the occasional technical drawing that does not match what I know and other drawings say. So, but we'll get to that when we come to it. The majority of this book, by the way, very easy to, to thumb through quickly on account of um, it's just mostly images with captions. But again, compared to like any of these like other types of books, you get very high quality as you can see. So external walk around, literally just like you were walking around the thing. Very good shots, breaks my heart every time I see this. Um, I've been talking to someone from the uh, Fort Benning Restoration Shop about this. Apparently there's a theory that these armor plates do still exist somewhere. And while they, they don't have any intention of restoring her to running order, I don't think it's out of the question that this might go back on. So that's, that's very encouraging. That's if it could be found, right? So again, so there's a couple of pages of just really nice images. Um, I will point out that although this is color, this was painted much later, and don't pay any attention to like paint colors or anything. But so it's broken into sections. So you see, like here, the front end. So they'll they'll look around. Basically, the front plates. Here's where the 
like here it says the interlock of foremost vertical armor plate with the right hull side hull plate like it just describes everything you're looking at uh, this retaining thing which was added on but that's just how it goes they go section by section images so here's the driver slits there's the periscope holes here's some tool clamps and this is actually one of my favorite pages in the entire book um, but I'm kind of a weirdo so a technical drawing of uh, the driver's vision port, which is cool. And there's a technical drawing of the fenders there. Very close-up shots of all these little bits. Now for a modeler, um, this is, in my opinion, invaluable because, like, just that. I mean, if you needed to look at that because the fenders are off, I don't have any other reference of that. Now here's the thing that is, it, it was amazing to me. This series of images here actually has caused, cost me some money. Because if you look at these images, now this is your standard Halter Werkzeug, right? Which means tool clamp. And it shows the shovel tool clamp on the front of the front plate, right? So here it is closed, here it is semi-open, here it is open. Now this is the tension style of clamp, which has sort of this little locking area here. Here's our area with this and this bar for it to go in. I'd never seen one this close, and certainly not being shown how it worked. And the thing that blew my mind was that I had never seen how messy the welds were on a tank like this. Because now I was understanding that these clamps are, in general, riveted to a small metal bar, which is then welded onto the hull. Like, I just didn't understand how that worked. Plus, it's not shoddy workmanship so much as if welds are messy. And I think that maybe modelers care a little too much about how careful they are with that sort of thing. Why I say it cost me money is I started buying these things. I now actually collect um, real clamps because this sort of sparked my interest just in how, how they worked and stuff. So moving on, uh, still on the front end, super close-up shots of the hull extensions. Uh, every little marking that's on her. So not only is it a, a study of the, the Tunisian era Tigers, the initial Tigers, but of just the exact state of this vehicle. And, uh, you know, so here's like the graffiti and here's number stamps. And I mean, we assume this is graffiti. We don't really know, at least I do. Basically, it, someone tapped a bunch of letters into the hole. And uh, it could have been army guys. It could have been someone at Aberdeen. We, I have no idea. So again, actual factory markings, close-ups of just about everything you can imagine. That's just the front. So it's just the, you know, very focused on the front plates and down here on the hull sides. Moving on to right hand side. Um, an interesting thing about um, this particular tiger, and she's had a really interesting, you know, post-war life, but uh, one of the smoke launchers obviously was gone when they captured her and she has this repair here. And these two odd shovel holders, which they zoom in on here. So right here. Now this is finally I have one right here, which is this exact thing. So again, this, this book did help me kind of geek out on this sort of thing. But uh, until uh, I got one of these, this book was my only reference for how they worked, and I found it really interesting. And um, so you can see, it's almost like having one like right there. Like it's, it's pretty crazy. It's a very, very good reference book. It's not... An in-your-face reference book, though, it's interesting. It's like you're walking around the thing. But you can see that despite the fact that these have holes for riveting to, to little pieces of metal here, in this case it looks like it was field applied, straight up welded right to the hull side. Which is interesting because I've never seen that on another Tiger. But why, why I brought the real one out is that um, you see these bends here. Like, that is exactly what that should look like. I hadn't seen, uh, this is essentially what the end of a shovel holder looks like, so I hadn't seen it that close up before. So the rear plate section, just an overall overview onto the, the cover for the exhaust. Here we have a te technical drawing. He's uh, assuming certain things as these were gone when she was captured. They're showing what's broken, they're showing great close ups of all these things. Also, if you're just into weathering and, and texturing like I do in games, this is a very good example of something that's super rusty. Moving on, on there, talking about where the five holes should go, obviously they're not on this one. I found this interesting, these two holes that are in the bottom of the sponsons. Until I saw this, I didn't know those were actually real. 
because they're on dragon kits and I thought it was really sloppy that they left locator holes like that but that's how they actually located those things on the real tank so I was like oh holy crap that's very cool again though uh, something to notice when looking at things this close up is how much material is built up on everything that's welded on a tank so if you ever get too much glue and you've got kind of a nasty seam around there you can really easily just be mimicking real welds um, more close to the tool clamps lots are broken on this particular tiger they give you a layout of all of the things in the hull side which there are very good views of uh, also notable is that this has a early war convoy light that is not correct for the time it was added post-war they move on to the running gear um, not much to see there as it's it's all on the tank we have a cross-section technical drawing you can find stuff like this in the other reference books I showed you uh, but some of this just for, for modelers we simply want the visual reference so things like this can be a lot more helpful than things like this depends on your level of obsession with the tank but this is a book for everyone not just scout modelers oh, everyone into the tiger no, probably not everyone but again another technical drawing so that's the um, final drives and sprocket and this is the swing arm torsion bar and suspension components um, moving on to turret sides this is where I start to get sad again but they give us close-ups of everything including the pistol ports and um, the cupola which is off actually during the time that this was reviewed this was reviewed at um, the Wheatcroft facility before it got shipped back to the US so it was not in the same state it's in now but now at Fort Benning it's even more pieces but technical drawing of the smoke launchers all of these seem to be okay uh, the cupola actually being off was kind of interesting to me because we can see how it is removed things like this we can see how damaged some of these handles are this is in the loader's hatch how the mantlet breaks up that's very helpful actually uh, especially for me when I'm doing 3d models of a tiger it does annoy me that those lifting things are still there from when the Americans put them on um, the interior of the mantlet anyone who's built the rye field with interior knows that's actually just about how they do it the gun sleeve the driver's hatches all of this pretty well in detail close-up shots and technical drawings we've got close-ups of the repairs that were done periscopes the interior workings of the hinge this is a famous uh, top-down schematic very old more close-ups on latches the headlights ventilators um, the antenna mount basically just going over the entire hull tech all of the little bits very close-up pictures uh, and technical drawings when they're necessary also pointing out uh, any post-war additions and like here they point to this so this is this and that's easy that's where the crowbar goes and it is, when you look at a close-up shot, a very simple, just bent piece of metal is welded to the hull. So that's that's exterior stuff. And that's, honestly, the majority of, of what I like to look at. Then we're moving on to the engine compartment. Um, not in very good shape, uh, which differs from the exterior. So a lot of this is just like looking at a junkyard. You can see certain parts of it are in okay shape, and we recognize these parts as, um, you know, the snorkel... I think these are what the exhausts are, is that what it is? Yeah, so uh, some of it's in pretty rough shape. But again, technical drawings, there's the idler. More of the engine compartment, technical drawings of how it should be laid out, our fuel tanks and all that. Very in-depth stuff with these technical drawings. So, um, again, the condition is not as good in this area as it is in others. So this part I find to be a little depressing. <laughs> um, then into the fighting compartment, that has been kept up as it was displayed in museums. Here we have a layout of the, the framing on the inside and the torsion bars. Since the hull side is removed, you got pretty good natural light in there, so these are actually some of the best interior shots you can get of the inside of a Tiger. Uh, like there's a firewall technical drawing. Pretty good drawing stuff we're, we're pretty familiar with seeing. Anybody who's built extensively models of Tiger or studied Tiger 
ammo racks, again pictures of everything they have, explanations of what you're looking at. There's the bins beneath the floor, there's the Fagerstahl number inside the hull. It's, it's like a very, very detailed survey, it really is. Um, again, there's... I remember building that. <laughs> it's like the drive. Uh, radios, I don't know how much of that's actually in there. Um, so the radio ops station has its own section showing you just about every conceivable thing that is left in this particular one. Disc brake housing has the German names for them as well. Very detailed. Again, technical drawings. This would be the driver's visor. Um, yep, I mean, it's very detailed. And one reason I do like the PDF version is I can zoom in on things that uh, maybe I want to take a larger look at. There's the basket. Now a lot of these, these technical drawings are, have been done on DW to Tiger 1. So there are multiple places to get these. Here we can see the cut off hull sides and the very depressing holes in the tank. Uh, now going over the sights and optics, gun breech, all of this very in-depth. Um, full survey of the turret interior and all mechanical parts. More pictures all in color than you could ever need, honestly. Um, now this, this, um, there's one area that I don't like. I can't find a full-on schematic drawing of it, but this is the turret ventilator cover, which does not currently exist on that Tiger. They have six of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. The amount of photographic evidence for this is massive. Even the later Tiger types, which didn't have this cover but had a ventilator of a similar design, it had a, a bit of a different mounting, but they all have six of these. Even in this book, in this shot, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. Yet in his technical drawing, this guy has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's just not right. Um, I'm not going to harp on about it indefinitely, uh, but this technical drawing does not match any of the turret ventilators, uh, armored covers that I've ever seen, or the photographic evidence right there. But that is anomalous, okay? That is not like the whole book is like that. It's just that this is wrong. Unless I'm insane. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the only mistake I found. Uh, moving on, loader's hatch. This is really, really great, actually. Um, pistol port interior detail explaining how it works. Um, very cool. Hadn't seen that before. And these uh, these uh, vision blocks are opened up so you can see how they work as well. Then we have technical drawings of the pistol ports. And then on to the HL210. So again, the engine stuff is a little bit uh, harder for me to look at, but they do have it broken into separate sections. Not as interesting to me as the other bits of the tank as I'm not really a engine mechanic or knowledgeable person about engines. Uh, then here we have a very, very nice addition, which is this guy who's online. I'm going to pronounce his name Leon. Uh, shoot. Did a series with a dragon model of how to make a Vorpanzer work. He has here a diagram. Here he did it himself. And so they just used his... Um, work uh, to explain this, as he does have sort of what I consider to be the definitive theory right now as to how that worked. So that was very wise of them. Then in the end we have uh, blown up versions of all of the technical drawings. So big easy reference of each drawing. It's actually very, very cool. Very large each thing, for in case you need to know real quickly. And then there again is my my gripe, just this one drawing. Uh, yeah, I don't want to talk about that. But um, everything else, that as far as I can tell, is correct. Uh, so here are references. Tiger Without a Home is a very famous book about this. Germany's Tiger Tank, DW to Tiger One. Jensen Doyle. Um, you know, so there, and then Tigers in Combat 1 and 2 are right here. So those, you know, if this is everything that this person referenced, well, or these people, Four of these books I own and are very famous 
Tiger books. So that's it. And then they also are telling you they're going to do a Panther one uh, coming up, which I very much look forward to. Um, conclusion is I actually really, really like this book. I didn't know that I did when I first got it. I looked at it a couple of times and like, I don't know what to do with this. Uh, but it's like you have the thing right in front of you and you can stare at the individual parts and as goofy as it is that that series on how the 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 clamps worked like really set me off. I'm like, holy cow, I like this a lot. Just because I've never seen anything like it before. So I very highly recommend this book, actually. It's, it's really solid.